just started recording on my end so i guess we'll start the meeting at 605 and i'll try and keep an eye out for more people that want to join and um welcome all in your cyber worlds um as chair of the rochester select board i find that due to the state of emergency declared by governor scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to addendum 6 to executive order 01-20 and act 92, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Um, in accordance to act 92, there's no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, I confirm that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone, video, or electronic means, and we're using Zoom for this remote meeting. All members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform, and the public has access to contemporaneously listen and, if desired, participate in this meeting by um, by contacting the town clerk and requesting invitation to the meeting or signing in on the posted meeting agendas, which are posted in um, three public places and on the website. Correct, Julie? I think so. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, we previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information by for accessing this meeting, including how to access the meeting using telephone, video, or other electronic means um, in our posted agenda. And it's also been posted on the website. And we have provided a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. So um, let me get Robert Gardner here real quick, admit him. So if for some reason during this meeting you experienced problems with your access, you can call me at 802-767-4464 as an emergency um, way into the meeting if you have something you really need to say and it's not working through the system. As a little backup, continuing the meeting, if necessary, in the event the public is un unable to access this meeting, it will be continued at a time and place to be determined. Um, but I, hopefully we will not need to do that. Um, Please note that all votes taken during this meeting that are not unanimous will be done by roll call vote in accordance with the law. And um, let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance of the select board members in attendance. Hey, June Hendricks is present. Pat is present. Pat Harvey. Frank Severy is present. Frank Severy is present. All right. So, um, so on we go. First off, does anyone have any additions to the agenda that they would like to make at this time. I, I do. I have one. I would just like to bring up the topic of uh, a possible um, town garden allotment system. Um, so I'll put that on there. Sounds good. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff to ask, but I don't know if you if I want to go through that now, if you want to get on with the meeting and you just want to put them on the agenda. That way we, um, we, okay. can, we can address them. Um, I just want to reiterate that the town plan is worn for next meeting on the 27th. And we, there was a thing that came out from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns today that we've got that large education payment that we're going to have to make here in another month or two. Mm -hmm. That's um, they they're going to hopefully do something. Uh, we need to bone up our legislators about that a little bit. Yep. And uh, I saw Sandy Hawes the other day and she said that she was going to attend tonight's meeting, but um, uh, she hasn't, I guess, get on. So a lot of um, people might be used to the 615 uh, meeting time. I'm not sure how we got on to the six o'clock. Uh, I guess the cyber world's a little more punctual than the, the world but so we got the um the um town plan warning for next meeting and the education payment possible relief um by the state yeah that's and that's a big payment so i'm not sure we're going to have money enough to cover that through uh 
you know, just our regular tax tax burden. So we're probably going to have to look at some other avenue for paying that, but we're going to need to do it. Um, you know, we're going to have to find out about it quicker than not. Yeah. So, yep. Um, another thing, uh, I was wondering in, in, uh, because the crisis, the COVID-19 crisis, should we be meeting more? Uh, maybe a, you know a little more frequently than we are. I mean, this was a long period between. This was a long these. stretch, yeah, between the last one. Yeah, I, I don't know if you, if anybody's got any input on that. Um, I wanted to ask Vic a few questions, if if I can, but I'd, I'd wait until after we get through the agenda stuff. Okay. Uh, I also would be looking forward to uh, working with maybe some voters in town uh, coming up with some idea of how we're going to run our election in the fall if we are still in a lockdown situation and come yeah. up with some ideas that we might be able to use going forward, uh, maybe several different things, uh, whether it be a, a drive-through voting type thing and, and uh, or a, maybe a, a voting in the gym and have people spread out and rip the voter rolls and like thirds or whatever so people aren't all gathering in one spot to go through the voting yep. uh just different ideas but it'd be good to get a group of people together Start thinking and, about it yeah to, yeah just because you don't know how i don't know how this thing is going to play out i think nobody does really it could go for you know another six months it could go another year i mean if there's no testing being done that's going to really cause some issues I think and can come on anytime so I think we ought to look at that I and agree. Uh, another thing I thought about was uh, the taxes as far as our uh, budgeted plans and delinquencies and that I, I think we need to have a good idea how we're going to handle that uh, as far as you know I know Becky has a lot of the responsibility there but Maybe we come up with something where she can work up some good budget plans for people where we still have money coming in. I got a real sneaky suspicion that probably our delinquencies are going to be up in the next few months and and we're going to have to come up with some idea so that we keep money coming in. I think it really is imperative to our financial health. Uh, and a couple other things we need to think about is uh, what all the people that run our budgets, if they're uh, really putting their needs before their wants, and uh, we really got to make sure everybody's being tight here, because uh, I think it's going to be a tough, it could be some tough sledding going on down the road here. And, and I think we ought to look at the road work and make sure we're doing the right things there. Um, I know we've got some grants out there. And if we can get them or if they're even going to have them now due to the way finances are going to be, even the state's going to be in trouble with that, I think. Um, and uh, that's, I guess that's about all I have. Good. I'm about out of paper. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's all right. That's good. No, it's all important stuff. Yeah. No, I don't know. I, I've. I feel like kind of like I jumped out of an airplane without a parachute here. I've only been right, doing involved this. two times, so I really don't know what I'm doing. But yeah, well, no, that's um, that's why you got voted in, so you could bring up <laughs> yeah. things that you're concerned Great. about. That's good. Yeah, I'm sure, it was all that good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, oh, well. so um, and we've had an, uh, another couple people join, and are there any other additions to the agenda at this time? Is this, do I say something at this point, Dune? What um, I'd like to say? Carol, no, you're already on the agenda. Okay, this I'm already on there. All right. That aren't on the agenda yet. Okay, thank you. I have a quick question, Dune. Yeah. Re regarding the uh, porta potty that's right next to the new fire station, is yeah. that open for the public to use or not? It's, um, this usually, closed in the winter and opened in the spring. So it's probably um, about open to be used, you know, once the leaves. So it would be okay with the COVID virus 
to use that or well good question who's going to be sanitizing it right right yeah, so that's something a question to put on that i would think we'd want to close anything like that i don't i don't how do we have uh yep we don't have people around to handle that yeah, i mean no it's basically yeah all right so we'll put that on the agenda too and and um, talk about that right now we're still just gathering that's a good one berman thank you I would think, um, would, does the fire department have um, control of that or something? I don't know. There's no. no fire department. <laughs> was that put down there for that little park? Yeah, that was part of the uh, requirements of oh, the, that's right. that's the right. conditions of the, of the park, of the grant for the park that we'd have. A, um, a, so I would think we'd be, be able to put a sign on that pretty easily. Yeah, yeah. And close that off. Yeah. Um, All right. John, these are uh, things on... Um, is that, we, that it? Are you saying something there, Patty? I lost you. Is that it for the amendments? <laughs> is that for the amendment ad, ad, additions to the agenda? Amenda. Yeah, you're going to amend the Chikunos agenda. Like to, the Bronco Chikunos would like to talk about water and chlorination. All right. Okay. okay. Um, oh, well, you said water and it started raining again. Look at that. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we did get something too, and I got a, a press release on my Herald email from the state about from the state water commissioner about. All right, great. Planet. So we'll get on to that, and then we can um, you can share that with us when we get to it. Um, I don't have it in front of me. I'm sorry. All right. Um, but I was going to say they should have sent it to the town too. I would think. I did not see it like that. All right, so any other um, additions? Um, see none, and there's nobody here waiting to get in, I don't think. So let's um, move on to the prior meeting minutes of the March 23 meeting. And um, I would move that we accept those a groundbreaking um, first virtual meeting minutes as um, recorded. I second it. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So that's a unanimous on that. And have we had the um, the annual town meeting minutes approved by the moderator yet? Yeah. They're signed. Okay. They're signed. So I'd move to accept those as approved by um, Dan McKinley, the town moderator for that meeting. And I do second that. All right. All in favor? Bye. All right. Bye. All right. And then again, unanimous. Great. Um, we have, um, so this may um, shed some light on some of the other questions we had. So why don't we jump right to Joan with your updates that you have for us. You can, yeah. You're on yeah. deck and you can, we can hear you and see you. Yeah. Can, can you, can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so a bunch of things, some of these are just updates on things that we've discussed before, but sort of by way of reminder, if nothing else, uh, uh, the Mount Cushman culvert replacement project, uh, we have the construction funding in hand from most of it, a state grant, uh, structures grant, and the White River Partnership is committed to funding the 10% match. So uh, assuming that the bids don't come in higher than the funds that we have on hand, we shouldn't, the town shouldn't have to put up any cash for this one. Um, as for the bidding, I've been working with Cricket and the partnership to prepare the bid package and it's gonna go out uh, with a cover letter that explains the uncertainty of the timing of the work. Um, and that's gonna to apply to, you know, any of this state funding, um, uh, Frank, you were sort of referring to that and that's certainly the case for any state funding that we either have in hand or expect to have um, with some applications that I'll be submitting pretty soon. Um, we really don't know if there's gonna be a construction season at all this year, at least when it comes to state money and maybe federal money as well. I don't know what FEMA's policy is either. Um, so that, that's still a big uncertainty and the path I think we're on now with the construction that we were hoping to do this, this coming season would be um, go out to bid unless we hear something uh, to the contrary about that. 
and uh, contractors would bid based on the uh, based on not really knowing when exactly construction would take place, whether it would be this year or next year. Yeah, um, and that could certainly change. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but we just don't know at this point. So we thought the best thing was to proceed with the information we have and that if it changes, uh, it changes and it's going to affect everybody. Yeah. So I hope that sounds okay to you. Yeah, okay. I think that's good. the way to go. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so that also applies to uh, the applications I'm submitting. Um, originally, the structures and the class two roadway grants that VTrans does. Uh, the deadline was going to be April 15th, but they pushed it back to um, May 15th. So that gives me a little more time to submit stuff. At the same time, it also adds a little more uncertainty about when we'll know whether we have that funding or not. Um, obviously, if we don't get the funding this year, we won't be doing that work. Um, so you the oh, you said class four roads. I apologize. No, I class know. two. Class two. two. Thank you. Yeah. So um, one of the applications I'll be submitting. Uh, if you remember, Cricket did the. Uh, engineering design for Mason Brook, which is the culvert below Terry's on Bethel Mountain Road. Um, that needs to be a replacement because the work we've done up till now has just been temporary. So um, the plan has been to submit first structures grant for that replacement and combine that with the Rogers Brook um, cross drains, or it's actually a culvert that uh, better roads uh, that was an application I put into Better Roads. Mm, I'm forgetting now when that was, February, January, <laughs> I can't remember now. Um, those two would be done as basically two parts of a single project with one contractor bidding on both. Um, and that's the other thing that we hope will go ahead, but uh, we'll have to see whether, you know, when and if those grants are actually made and when we can do construction. Um, and then I'm also planning to submit a structures grant just for engineering work on Howbrook, which is up on Town Line Road. Um, Cricket and, and uh, Cooter went to go look at that mm, maybe three weeks ago or so. And that's also been a temporary fix and it's in pretty bad shape. And I don't know if you know that culvert, I hadn't seen it until last week. It's in this big dip in the road and uh, any big rainstorm um, hopefully not like the one we've just had today, uh, could really uh, do a lot of damage on that site. That was a temporary fix a few years ago also and needs attention. So that would just be engineering. And hopefully if we get that grant, I mean, if nothing else, certainly Cricket, that's something that Cricket can do because um, obviously it's not construction at this point. Um, uh, everything is just topsy-turvy right now when it comes to all this stuff. So, you know, we'll just have to see what happens. Um, uh, same message basically for the FEMA projects. I've been working with Cooter to put together uh, very simple bid packages for the work that still has to be done on some of those incomplete roads. Um, and I have to find out from FEMA what their policy is or, or will be. Uh, with respect to doing construction um, in the short term. Um, but meanwhile, we'll just have that stuff ready to go. And if we're lucky, maybe we'll be able to do some of them uh, late summer or fall and just get that work done. Um, I also have to check on how long we have to complete these projects uh, under the current FEMA grant. It's there, there is a deadline, I can't remember what it is, and I don't have my files with me on that um, at the moment. Um, but I will also look into an extension if we need one. And I'm assuming they would grant that because everybody's gonna be on the same boat with that. So. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, is big question is- culvert, Is that for culvert replacement? I'm Up sorry, there? which- Is that for culvert replacement? Which which oh, one that, are you referring to? The last one you were talking about with Cooter and- Is that- uh, Yeah, about? that's Howbrook up on Town Line Road. That's a culvert, yes. Yep. And, and the culverts on Jerusalem and that, and that's all part of a grant too, is that correct? Uh, that's, that's under FEMA. Those are cross drains there. I think there okay. might be one culvert, but that's all FEMA there. Okay. Yeah, and uh, we're, we're still waiting to hear back from FEMA on 
whether they're funding that or not. There's, there seemed to be a possibility that they, first they said, no, we're not gonna fund that. And then uh, when Cooter went out in the field with them a number of months ago now, uh, it seemed more likely that they would. So hopefully they will because yeah. there's like 21 of them or something that needs to be replaced. Um, and so also the, I'm sure you have a question about the status of reimbursement for federal highway on Bethel mountain road and the, the FEMA work that's been completed and it's still in the works. <laughs> uh, I've been in touch with both the FEMA representative and that we work with and with uh, VTRANS about the reimbursements and anytime they come up with another question, you know, where's the proof that you've spent this amount of money on that project? Um, I've been providing it to them. I think they have everything that they want from us at this point. Um, though you never know when it's over till it's over, but both of them are proceeding along. I know that. Um, and Dune, I, or did I send that to all of you? I'm sorry, I don't remember. There was an email from Deb Pierce, the woman I'm working with at VTrans, who said she's working really hard to have the reimbursement for Bethel Mountain Road to us uh, by June. Um, so uh, I am due to check in with her again this week and see how she's doing. Well, that would be good if you could keep on top of that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I sent you my email about that where I sort of made a plea. <laughs> and uh, yes. she, she got the message, so she should be working on it. Um, and then I want to make sure you remember that we have a special meeting on uh, Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday, April 22nd. Uh, to open the bid submitted for the West Hill Bridge replacement project. Um, the bids are all going to be coming in electronically um, and we'll set up a Zoom meeting. I don't know who's, yeah. you know, who's going to want to attend, um, but I guess that's what we need to do, yep. to make it a full and open, open public meeting. Um, bids for what? I'm sorry. Excuse me, Joan. I didn't hear. West Hill Bridge re replacement. Thank you. Uh, this is being fully funded, both the engineering and then the construction itself, which will be next year. This is fully funded by U.S. Forest Service. Um, so nothing the town needs to be putting in there. Um, so the RFP has advised the bidders that we're not going to be making any decisions at the meeting because it has to go through a technical review. Um, uh, and we need to make sure that obviously that the review follows the federal guidelines. Um, so that anyway, um, at least two of you need to be there. And if all three of you can, that, that, that would be great. And I'll be asking uh, Julie to set up a Zoom for us. Do you want to set a time up on that? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, let me look quickly at my calendar. I think it's, I think it's four o'clock. Four. I think so. Let me just check. I've got my calendar right here. Uh, April 20. Yeah. Four setting that. Sorry. That will be set up electronically through Zoom. Yeah. Julie yeah. will set it up through Zoom. Uh, and the last but not least, I, I sent, I don't know if any of you had a chance to look at your email. Oh, I wanted to, I did want to say that we have, we have 13. Uh, engineering firms who showed in, who asked for the RFP, and of course, not necessarily all 13 are going to bid. But uh, I think that's a pretty good sign that um, they're probably hungry and looking for some work like this. Is that for the West Hill Bridge? Yeah, that's for the West Hill Bridge. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, okay, so that's it for construction. And then I just wanted to point out, I fairly late in the afternoon, it was like 4:30 or so. I sent all of you. Um, an email that came from uh, VLCT. And apparently there's uh, some movement afoot to in Montpelier to request that the state take out a loan to uh, fund the education fund and the school district taxes that ordinarily you no know, towns are gonna be paying. They're gonna come due in what, May, June. And the idea is to ask the town to take out, I'm sorry, the state to take out a loan instead and make either some or all of the payments that are due on behalf of the towns because towns you know like rochester are all having expecting difficulties with revenues from uh property tax payments so it seems like it's just in the very beginning stages 
is it was a rather eloquent request that came in from the town of Colchester, which I guess VLCT is working on now. So you'll have that on in your emails if you haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, I second the motion. That's a good idea. Yeah, and yeah. actually, I uh, VLCT was asking if you want to contact uh, our state reps and and senators and ask them please to support it. So that's well, all I have. It certainly is something we ought to do. Yeah. So that's a that's a big that's a biggie there. Yeah, I mean, if nothing else, I think a lot of towns are all going to be in the same boat, so they got to do something. <laughs> Yeah, so that that kind of speaks to the the addition that you wanted to add to the agenda, Frank, about the education payment come and due, and it sounds like that's um, you know, we should definitely make some noise around that. Yeah. Yep. I, and I was kind of hoping Sandy was going to be here tonight so we could put the bug in her ear at mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sooner than later. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well we can, um, I'll give her a call after after the meeting to um, put the bug in the rear. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. All right. So, um, thank you, Joan. Is there anything else, or is that that covered pretty much? Yeah, that's it for now. No, that's a lot. Thank you, and <laughs> thank you for. Um, well, I'm glad you didn't have to drive all the way over the mountain in a rainstorm to join us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got, I miss uh, doing that actually. <laughs> yeah. So the only um there's not anyone here to speak on behalf of the library, but things are pretty quiet around there as they are um around the rest of town. Um the um no one Cooter's not here from the highway department, but it's, we've been blessed by a relatively easy mud season so far. I mean there's of course a few potholes um popping up here and there but they're um you know um you know checking the culverts and and um we're going to get working on grading the roads so we're um i guess we're um no big fires there in the road department <clears throat> and terry is not here to speak about the utilities but um while we're on the utility aspect of the agenda um, Nick, do you want to speak about your concern about the, um, the town water? You're muted right now, but there you okay. go. Good. So if, uh, I just have a question, this is Amy. Uh, if we as townspeople decided to write a petition and send it to the state, could we get that chlorinated water to stop or is that not possible? Um, I don't know if it's possible or not. It is, uh, I don't know if you read or not, Sandy Haas had a pretty eloquent letter written to the ANR um, presenting our case and our request not to do that. And that was um, pretty clearly denied. I did hear in someone um, speaking with the governor and it came to light that he was not aware that this chlorination mandate had been imposed upon the small towns. So um, I think that perhaps, um, you know, knocking on that door is, is um, would be worthwhile. But, but yeah, our initial um, request to, um, to ask for a waiver or a variance around this were not, um, there was no vehicle for a waiver and it's, um, and it should be clear that there is no problem with the water, there is no contamination, and there's no evidence that the virus is spread through that mechanism anyway. So it's really, they, the way they put it, it was in an abundance of caution. They, they wanted to minimize the chance of anyone, they figured they'd chlorinate everybody and, and kill off any germs that are in us. So it's less likely that we'd go to the hospital. Unfortunately, I don't know if it's, um, if it contributes to health or, 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 um, or, uh, hinders health having that chlorination personally. Um, I'm not drinking it. Um, but. Oh, I am. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, okay. it's, so, uh, I guess I did see Sandy's letter and I did see that she made that effort and I uh, watched it on front porch forum being discussed. I just was curious if there's any way to, I mean, if a petition was signed to send to the state. So uh, maybe I'll look into that and then see if it'll make any difference. I mean, sometimes when voters talk to the governor, 
things can happen. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was interesting to me that the governor was not aware of this. So I think that's where to start making some noise. Definitely. I mean, it seemed it, we were told that it was a governor. Man, so that's, that's where it broke down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Did you taste it? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It's not, yeah. it's not a no. I mean, yeah. we taste yeah. it you're trying to make coffee or tea. It just, it's awful. So um, I'm from a spring right now, but that means we're getting on the road and we're driving to go right. to the spring to get water. So that's not really good either to be leaving the town to go get water. No, that was one of the points that Sandy made in her letter that it was contrary to the stay at home request order exactly. made by the governor. If his people are being forced to leave their homes to go get palatable water. Um, the, there is a spring now that's running up on um, Fisk Road that is um, um, Ben Falk um, connected that up and he had, he installed it last summer. Actually, it's um, I guess pretty obvious on the, um, just after you turn off of Oak Lodge Road down on Fisk Road down on the right, um, you know, uh, several hundred yards or so. And um, that's, um, they when they put it in last year, they they tested it and and found it to be clean. It hasn't. He's got no guarantees of what it is, but it's. Um, I would drink it. So anyway, okay. just um, so you know, you don't have to drive all the way to Stockbridge. Is that's where, where I'm going. Going. We've been trying to check Green Ford and, and going there. So this would probably be closer. Ben Fox Place. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Dune. 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 Yeah. Go ahead. Nancy. Hey, Nancy. Um. In a, in a press release, Brian Redman, who is the drinking water and groundwater protection person, uh, indicated by rule, community water systems have to have the capability to disinfect, and they were instructed to disinfect. When the state of emergency is over, so is the instruction, quote unquote. Yeah. So... I guess we'll see how long we're in a state of emergency. Mm -hmm. Found it. Yeah, yeah. I did um, talk with Terry a couple of days ago, and he said all his reports have been looked at by the state, and we're in good uh, standing with them. And he was hoping that he wouldn't have to keep doing this for very much longer. Um, That's what he was hoping. Dune, can I qu ask a question quickly? Yeah. Please? Um, I want to make sure I have this correct. Um, you looked into uh, requesting a waiver for this. You you talked to someone from the yeah. State. Sandy Haas actually wrote a pretty eloquent letter to the Agency of Natural Resources. And, Julie uh, Moore. Julie Moore, is that who it was? But um, mm -hmm. and then there was um, and and asking specifically if there was a a waiver process, and was informed that indeed there was not, and this order was. Um, made at the at, um, just uh, effort to be overly cautious in this um, tenuous situation we're all in. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Yeah, no, thank you. Might as well have it clear. Well, I, I, I get confused sometimes when people talk really fast and I can write, can't write as fast as they talk. <laughs> yeah. um, so let's see. The, um, um, so while we're on this topic, which leads into the whole COVID situation, um, um, Frankie wanted to ask Vic some questions, and Vic is here with us tonight. You want to um, you want to continue with that? Sure. Uh, there are just a couple of questions. I was wondering how the the home shopping is going. Is that being utilized much or? Uh, yeah, Frank, we've had uh, 17 deliveries in the first two weeks. Uh, we've got a great team of volunteer drivers. Uh, Sue, my wife, has organized this, and it's been aided by uh, cash uh, advances from the uh, Rebuild Rochester Foundation that then gets reimbursed by the people who uh, receive the groceries. Uh, so we're, we, we have to work around what uh, Max is able to do in terms of uh, of, uh, they, they can't take um, uh, telephone uh, charges. And so we, we have a whole process in place to, to deal with that, which seems to be working out. It's a little cumbersome, but it works out. People are very grateful and uh, it's going well at this point. So 
That's great. So far, That's so good. Great. And it's it includes Rochester and Hancock. Yep. Uh, Dorothy Robson is coordinating the work in Hancock. And uh, I've talked to uh, uh, Bruce Hyde at uh, the select board uh, in uh, Granville. They're, uh, they're thinking about doing something similar, but they would probably do it with uh, Dan Sargent's store up there, which uh, uh, that Dan will take uh, telephone orders and pack things up for curbside delivery. So, um, so, so far so good. Uh, that's good. How about the food shelf? Is that being hit harder now or, you know? Well, uh, it's interesting. Uh, uh, Catherine Shankman and I were over there today. We met with Kevin and Ruth uh, McLaughlin and, and uh, I'd never been to the food shelf before to actually be there. So we got a good sense of how it works and, what their numbers okay. are. I'd, I'd called the food bank up in Barry a couple days ago. They, they deliver food to all food shelves in the state. And uh, they said they are gearing up for a major increase in demand over the next several months because of the, uh, uh, you know, the economic conditions and the loss of employment and so forth. And uh, indeed the numbers they gave me for the Rochester food shelves said that the numbers here had doubled between January and March. Uh, Veggie Van Gogh, which is a food delivery, uh, free food service that Gifford offers, uh, I was told uh, by Bethany Silloway that their numbers had, do had doubled from about 250 families in uh, March to over 500 in uh, April. They've already done their April distribution. Uh, and so the indicators are that uh, the demand is going to increase significantly. So we did have some conversation with Kevin and Ruth about dealing with that. And, uh, and uh, so you may see uh, some solicitation for more donations of uh, money to the food shelf, which would be a great thing if, uh, you know, the need goes up. And so, so this is, um, you know, one of the things that we're looking at uh, as maybe sort of the next wave of activity is going to be around food security, uh, not just here, but really everywhere. There's been articles in the paper about uh, all over the country, food demand is, is up pretty significantly from uh, food shelf operations. I, I would I want to thank you guys for doing such a good job with the newsletter. It's really a lot of good information there that comes out. I think it's a good you guys have done a great job there. Thank well, you. Thank you. Yeah, Rob, uh, uh, Rob Gardner and uh, Lizzie Shack. Are you having another newsletter soon? Yeah, there's one coming out this week. Um, um, so could you just mail. put a little bone in there about the census? About the, the census? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not, if Rob is on the line, I'm not sure if we've, uh, put the, put the issue to bed or not, but yeah, we can put something out on social media. Well, even if it's not, it doesn't necessarily have to be this next one, but maybe down the road, just to bone people up to do the census. I mean, we mentioned yeah. it at town meeting, but not everybody attends and your mailer gets to about everybody in town. And yeah. I think it's an important thing we need to do. And whether people take care of it or not, I, I don't know. But yeah. if we put the plug out there, it might be That's, a yeah. good way to do it. Yeah. Well, we've done the mailer every week for the past, I think this will be the fifth week. And we, we think that it's probably not needed on a weekly basis at this point. Um, but uh, you know, as issues come up, and as I say, there are other uh, ways to get the word out uh, to the public. Um, and we'll do that. Um, excuse me, could I mention, since you're talking about food and everything, um, I talked to Erica Harrington down at the school today, and that meal delivery thing that they've been doing there for, for the kids, she said they've been doing an um, averaging 100 um, children every week that they've been giving meals to. Oh. Um, you know, they're, that the Monday, Wednesday, Friday meal deliveries. Yeah. So and that's for, that's for breakfast and lunch. Breakfast and lunch. Um, and um, uh, each uh, day they get the meals for two days of those two. And um, you can pick them up at the school. And also one of the school buses is going out and has a route to drop them off yeah. for people who can't do that. So I just thought that that has to do with food security and everything. Too, yeah. You know, the whole issue of food security really needs to be looked at comprehensively for for the area and i've been talking about that with uh monica collins and bruce hyde uh there, there are a variety of different sources of uh free and low cost food uh, for uh, an increasing number of people who are going to need it and uh you know how good a job we're doing overall versus what we could be doing and you know what are the resources available uh, all that needs to be looked at and we're going to start working on that martha uh was that two schools the 100 kids is that both schools or just our school 
I believe it was for both because I got um, um, I got an email from Erica Harrington with some school news and it said Rochester and Stockbridge School News and she mentioned the hun the figure of a hundred kids so I believe it was for the combined two schools. Yes, it, it, it was. That is, that is correct. It was for both schools. I did put a um, bulletin up on the web town website. Good. Um, <clears throat> so the let me see, leave that up for now. <clears throat> I guess Frank, the um, um, Joan kind of answered our your questions about um, the road work and whether grants are going to be coming in. I guess that's going to be a moving target, and we'll see for that. that goes. I did have a yep. Um Today, when I was in the town office there looking over some bills and uh, asked him about gravel, how much he was going to need. And, uh, you know, we just paid a bunch this month for what he hauled. And there's a pretty good stockpile up here, but he figured he'd probably have, if he didn't go overboard with, with resurfacing this year and, and really chose well, he, he looked at maybe he'd have maybe half enough up here now to do what he has normally would do. So we'd be looking at some more money there for gravel at some point. So just to put the bug out there for you. Yeah. Yep. That is traditionally um, in the past has been something that got us in trouble as the gravel budget was the easiest one to start picking away at and and cutting when things got tight but this might be a year where we have to resort to that yeah 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 um, that's what i was thinking too <clears throat> um so that that ties into your request to talk about the you know the budget committee and how the the needs versus wants and how, you know, we're going to at some point sit down and kind of look at what we pass for budget and, and see what the projections are going to show us and see where we can start pinching some pennies. Um, yeah. That's going to be an ongoing project. Um, let's see. Got in terms of um, voting and how we're going to work that in the fall election, it's good to bring that up and put it on the radar. I don't know if we need to discuss exactly how we're going to approach that at this meeting, but it's definitely something to um, to look at and see how the mail-in voting is going to evolve around the country in terms of its um, usability and, and legitimacy. So that's... Um, I guess that's to be continued. Yeah, I believe that uh, most of that will be controlled by the state anyway. I agree, the state. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think so, it will, but I think uh, on a, on a, with our geography, we're going to have to figure out some avenue of how to proceed with whatever the state recommends we do. Yeah. You know, I mean, as far as how we handle it. If, if they allow mail-in voting, it's one thing, but if they don't, then we're going to have to figure out some way to do in-person voting where we still keep the distance. Yeah. You know, if, if this thing is still here, and I got a feeling it will be, you know, this thing could draw out for quite a yeah, while. Yeah. So. Could be a drive-by voting thing. You drive up to one booth and check in and, and pull ahead and mark your choice and then drive up to the next one and let it out. Sanitize it. Yeah, yeah. What a mess. Yep. Um, so in that, um, I'm gonna save this for now. We've got um, utilities. We've got a couple things that um, we have the uh, in terms of the new business. We've got an approval of the Able Waste Management Agreement for 2020-2021. Um, you know, that's um, at the town meeting, people pretty much, um, pre well, that pretty much uh, voted to approve the recycling. This isn't the recycling budget, though, is it? This is the waste management. Um, it's, no, it's recycling. This is the recycling. So there you go. That's um, 
it's um, the, you know the town did vote to prove that, but is um, is that something we want to drag our feet on and something that we would we need to really cut expenses? There's um there's a big chunk oh. right there. But then again, we have the same agreement or the argument that we're saving a lot of people from driving out of town to get rid of their trash and it's it's a good service to have so excuse me dune i was going to say not only is it recycling and trash but he also offers a, a compost service composting right i take so. advantage of and i'm sure the other people do too. yeah so um it's um what do, what do you think the other select people on this should we go ahead and execute this this agreement i think we should go ahead with it um it was strongly supported at town meetings. So um, I yeah. think that providing the service in town is probably the better way to go even now. Yep. yep. Yeah, I, I'd have to go along with that. I think it's it's something we really have to, we we should offer. Yep. All no, right, I'd, I'd move to uh, to approve and execute that, that agreement and then we can sign it individually. Um, at a distance. Yep. And I second that. You second that. And all in favor? Aye. Uh, all right. That's unanimous. I believe that I saw that the uh, food composting is being pushed back until January 1st. It, it is. It's, um, I know they're talking. Did they finally make that decision? I know they were entertaining pushing that back. What do you mean? The, I, the legislature. The legislature oh, is, is um, yeah. relaxing the requirements on the food composting and perhaps even recycling um, in the current situation just to um, um, make things a little easier on everybody. Okay, but we'd still be allowed to do it, of course. Yes. Now, I don't know if they... Um, yeah, probably. I'm, I'm, yeah, I would I'm assume that, that for a while, maybe a year. I think I've been bringing the compost. Yeah, there. they may not be required to deliver it to a composting facility. They may be allowed to just dump it along with the trash um, in that situation. But yeah. geez, I hope not. Yeah, um, we also have the um, an, uh, for the approval of the White River Alliance is um, wants to host a household hazardous waste day on August 15th, Saturday, August 15th. And um, I would I would move to approve that in the um, one in the optimism that things will maybe um, be relaxed a little bit more by then. But it's also a situation where I've observed it. It's not a, a crowded situation. And I think that people could come and deposit their their wastes in a, in a safe way. So I'd, I'd move to approve that request. Or what do you guys say about that? I can second that. Yeah. Yeah. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. All right. Look at that. Um, then we come down into the new business. Carol, um, you're up. You had uh, requested to, um, you had an idea of suggesting a, a walking maze. Yes. Um, I don't know what happened in the, uh, I'm seeing someone's face here. And before I was seeing the meeting, I was seeing different people, but anyway, can you hear me? I can hear yeah. you. Yep. Oh, okay. So I had a thought that came to me and I agree along with, um, Frank here and some of you that this is going to go on longer than, um, than we think. And um, I had an idea of something maybe the town could do. And uh, it is a walking labyrinth maze, which um, is a walking meditative exercise that is good for adults and children. And it could be done in a very large circle. Um, and you would mow a design in the grass in this round circle where you could go in one end and come out the other. And it's very large because you have the, 
the width of a lawnmower and then you have the grass in between the designs and then it just goes into a labyrinth design. And, um, and then you have enough at the other end, you would come out the other end and, um, it would have to be done in the early spring because that's when the grass is coming up and it's just good for the soul, the body and the mind. And I think it would be something since we're, I don't think we're going to be doing a lot of, um, gatherings. And I think it would be something that would be, um, like I say, meditative. I actually had a vision of maybe the flags that are at the farmer's market or the flags at the harvest fair being um, two to walk into and then two at the far end where you could come out of. So there's a beginning and an end and just... Uh, a walking meditative exercise while this is going on. And then when uh, this all ends, we can mow it unless people really enjoy it. And then maybe we could keep it. So to be clear, you're talking about doing this on the park, the downtown park? Actually, I took a look at um, the park and I don't think there is a place big enough and I also looked at the park down by the firehouse, and I don't think that's big enough. So I think the only place really to do it is probably, um, and I couldn't do this by myself. A design has to come up. I did mention it to Robert Finkel, and he liked the idea. I thought it was a nice idea, a good idea. And... Um, like I, like I said, I couldn't do this myself. The design has to come up and then the person that mows the lawn would have to, it would have to be okay that it was, it was done. It would just be something that could be enjoyed by the town's people. And so where did you have in mind, Carol, if not the park or the other, either park? So I'm thinking the only place that's probably big enough is down by the school. You mean like one of the ball fields? Um, an area that's flat and yeah, one of the ball fields. Mm. Like I said, you know, eventually it gets mowed if, when and if this all ends, but something to do for the summer or you could get out, walk and meditate at the same time. And just came to me and I just, thought I needed to express my opinion to the town. Do you have an idea about the diameter of how big of a space you actually need? I don't. I just know that it should be round. If you go online and you look up um, labyrinth mazes, you can see there's many, many different designs. It would be simple because we certainly don't want whoever mows it to get nutty. We just want them to you know, mow it. <laughs> so. I have a question. Um, they there was a um, sign put up saying that all the fields down at the school and the skate space and everything playground and etc. were closed to the public now uh, because of the COVID um, thing. Right. So I don't. Well, I, I, yeah. I don't think they want groups of people, but this is something you do by yourself. And where you come into it versus where you go out of it <coughs> is quite a far distance, <coughs> depending on how big it is. So you're thinking about this being uh, a one person at a time? Yes, one, it's one person at a time. Um, with or without dogs? Uh, it, there's, a, there's, there's still some more questions about that. And yes, the recreation area is at the school um, you'd have to get the permission of the school, not necessarily the town for that. I don't know who mows the, um, the school the, the grass. The, the town mows the ball fields um, that are down by the tennis courts. Right. Well, isn't that because we own them? 
Yeah, the town owns the fields by the tennis courts where the two right. baseball diamonds are in the backstops. And then the, um, the big hay field in between that and the school is owned by Bill Trillkill. And yeah, then the no, town, the only um, big town um, school owned fields so has got the smaller ball field and then the soccer field behind the school would be the two, two places there. Uh, I think Patty had the right idea there, Doom. I think we should check the deed on that to make sure that if it's not used for um, athletics or whatever, it might revert back to farmland. Because I know when we did the power line going back down to the school years ago, the only way we could get right away through that long stretch there from Mr. Kirby was to put it underground. And we when it failed that one year, we tried to bring it back up overhead just to save on cost, but we never At could do that. The either. field behind the school there? Yeah. yeah. Where Mr. You know, remember Mr. Kirby there lived? Yep. yep. Where, uh, what, I forget what the heck her name is now. That's but. there now. Yeah. Got the Nancy Mather lives there now, I think. Or no, the yeah. art teacher lives there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, McFeatris yes, right. yeah. lives there. But, you know, he, he may have had some kind of, you know, thing in there, because I'm sure that came with, that was a piece that the town maybe purchased with a idea in mind to use it for athletics, but then when it got, you know, exactly. done, if they ever changed the use on it, it might re have to revert back to farmland. And that, yeah, I'm just saying that could be an issue there. We, we need to make sure that that wouldn't be an issue for any changes we make down there, I would think. We just have to research it. Yeah. Well, it's um, Carol. It's an interesting idea, and it's um, I guess we should, you know, it's put out here now to how many? We got fifteen people in this meeting, and I think that it's um, um, we'll um, think about it. You know, okay. see if we can't drum up some interest. Okay. Yep. Um, it's so, just an idea of something yeah. that we can do while this is going on right and that's something that on um, the um the the covid task force um was also one of our thoughts was how do we um instill some optimistic things into the town instead of just managing bad news um and right. so that this is this would be a step in the in that direction this also kind of segues into the issue that or the idea that I had put on the agenda about developing a, a garden allotments. Um, on I love property. that idea. I and, love that idea. And um, that is, uh, I was thinking of the, the town property, which is the ball fields behind the tennis courts, which is um, it is in the floodplain, but it's also right next to the river, which makes it easy to get get water. Um, it's where the town is paying now currently to mow it, and it's being used predominantly by dog walkers, um, which is um, which is nice. But um, I think that um, we've done a little bit of research on um, the allotments, and and it would be something where. Um, you know, it is a small contract drawn up and a, a small fee for, um, and then there's issues of, you know, does it need to be fenced in so um, it keeps people's dogs and, and deer and what have you from tromping through it. Um, you know, if um, I'm thinking like a 12 by 24 plot for 50 bucks a season to run it and, you know, if the town or we got a volunteer farmer with a tractor mounted rototiller to do an initial, um, you know, um, cultivating and, and uh, get some manure in there. It's just, it, it's a thought. And then if we're also looking at some food insecurity going forward, the, um, you know, you can eat canned beans till the cows come home, but where are you going to get fresh produce? That's, that's the catch, you know? And um, um, anyway, that's, um, Dune, what do you envision the water source being for the gardens? Um, well, initially, I think that being adjacent to the river, people could just get some buckets of water. But um, I would, being in the floodplain, we'd have to verify that it's allowable. But we could 
build like the picnic structure down in the new park was allowed in the floodplain because it's the main bulk of the structure is raised up and the water can run through it. And if we had a water tank up on stilts that um, we could fill with a pump once a week or something, we could, you know, pretty easily do a little little hose system in there. Um, um, so, but being right, you know, initially right next to the river, you could, you know, just um, haul some buckets over. There used to be a water fountain right at the corner of the tennis court that you yeah. had. Uh, right. It went water. out. It went out with Irene. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but in terms of, you know, um, I wasn't thinking of hooking a water source into the town water so much because who wants to water their garden with chlorine anyway? Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Hopefully it'll go be. Gone. Hopefully it'll be gone. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah. It, I yeah. have, can I make a comment, Jim? Yep. So, uh, in my experience in the city, this kind of thing's really popular. Mm -hmm. People love it. However, the issue of water, when you consider, depending how big the plot is, becomes a real serious thing. So, uh, in I guess Washington D.C., when Char was involved in one of these things, uh, they had a spigot there. But even with the spigot, when you consider the amount of water people were hauling to their plots and how heavy water is and everything else that became like one of the most difficult problems in the in the whole thing so i, I think that's a functional issue the other thing is they always look pretty ramshackle these these places in the city each person had their own thing they had their own style they had their own pile of junk they were all complete and they and it looked pretty ram, ramshackle so how they how they look may not matter i don't know you're talking about a big visible area out there and uh, I, I don't know how you try to get people, or, or if you should get people. To well, they, um, they, the, um, I was kind of cruising some, um, some guidelines for uh, existing allotment systems, and they get very specific about, um, you know, what's allowed, what's not allowed, how much, where do you put your compost? You're not putting stuff on paths. There's, you know, we would have to be very specific about, um, you know, what what is what is allowed and what is not allowed. You know, don't want someone building a shed and moving in down there. You know? uh, but, uh, June, yeah, I downloaded from our town in Maine um, their guidelines for community gardens. Yeah, um, which is pretty specific, and you can pick and choose from it. And I'll leave it over with Julie tomorrow. Yeah, that would be interesting to see. So you can look at it. We would definitely would have to have some um, some directions there and directives, so it's not. They just, even have applications. Yeah, yeah. I know in in England there is even waiting lists. There's some of these some of these plots I saw as far as a. 17 year waiting list for people yeah. to have wow. access to these plots. Um, Amazing. You know, it's a very interesting um, idea. I think it's a very interesting idea, and, but I think it's probably a fairly big project. Yeah, yeah it would be, um, it would be, it would definitely be something to take on. Frank, you're a gardener. What are you thinking? <laughs> I mean, <it's> <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> No, I'm not saying you'd take I've it over. I've seen a couple in town, and and I have to agree with Rob on it. You know, I, uh, um, the one that comes to mind for me is the one. There's one at the college down in uh, South Royalton, on the going out towards Hurricane Flats, past the high school, and there's probably three gardeners there that garden and there's probably eight others that have weeds mm -hmm. so it's a mishmatch of like rob was saying it can look kind of hideous if if they're not cared for that yeah. would be my biggest fear on putting a, a community garden in. it's fine if, if you've got people that really attend to them and having gardened as much as i have in my life i know how easily they can be uh they can get away from you yeah and i i have big gardens too and i <laughs> I mean, after the fruit starts ripening, I don't weed. So they look like crap when you, by the time you get around. But, uh, but I do get a lot of food off them too. So yeah, it's yeah. really up to what people want. I, I, I have, there's pros and cons to it. 
but if people really want it and they want to put the effort into growing stuff it's great but if they don't then it's you know it turns to it becomes a a public nuisance really so it's you can whatever. limit how many sites you have too yes True. it True. does make a difference yeah but it's really if if you had some rules about it i you know i don't know if you make one rule you got to make two because you forgot something in the first yep. rule yep. So, uh okay. you pretty I, I don't know there's, there's a lot of it the Agency of Natural Resources would not want us putting any type of phosphorus fertilizer down by the river. It's got to be all organic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well I finally go right beside it, so <laughs> they certainly put the put the organic right. on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> organic can be high phosphorus too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, it can. No question about it. But I don't know. It's something to think about. I don't. Uh, really I guess it'd be know. interesting to see how much interest there there was. You know, if we um, if there are people that would, you know, come out. You know, I guess we'd put it out there. And Martha, you could put it in the paper that I'm mentioning. It was yeah, how much worth as a thought? And if um, if there is, it'd be. And we're curious to see what is the interest in such a project. And if um, you know. It's, it's uh, this is a strange time, and it might be worth doing something a little, little um, creative to, to um, again, well, not only you know bring some fresh food to some families, but yeah, also, I was just uh, thinking, um, you know, the our farmers market has been very popular the last couple of years on the park, and who knows if we're going to be able to have that this summer? Right, right now, there's a, a moratorium on on the farmer's market. You right. Can um, I mean, there's a number of things that we might not be able to have this summer, but that was one I was thinking of. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I rely on the uh, stuff in the farmer's market because I can't have a garden anymore. I can't physically do a lot of the garden work. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people might be interested, people like me maybe who live in the village and maybe they physically can do it, but they don't have the land for it or something or, you know. I think yeah. Anyway, it's, it's uh, putting it out there. Start that discussion, you know, see what comes of it. Yeah, I, I don't know why you wouldn't want to, just to see if there's interest. It could be good. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. We ought to check to make sure we could do that with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, right. I, right. So if there's any legalities in the deed, I I have no idea. It it could be a little reminder of the bingo property there years ago with the school, you know, once the school got rid of it, it had to go to forest service land or whatever. Yeah. I, I know there was a stipulation in that deed where you couldn't have a building on it or anything. So. All right. Um, Frank, one other thing that you had brought up, which we should um, mention again is the, um, the hearing before the next select board meeting on the town plan and julie i believe that the the draft for that is available on the town website is that correct yes it should be it should be all right because that's what people would wonder about how they could go and see that i know we had had a physical copy at the town office for people to see but obviously that's not something we're encouraging right now yeah. Can I jump in for one minute, Dune? Sure. Um, how long does the meeting usually go on? Um, the select board meetings? Yes. Boy, you never know. We've had them as quick as 15 <laughs> minutes and as long as a couple hours, a couple, three, four hours. OK. Um, um, I, I'm just I'm going to say bye now, but I want to commend everyone on that is here. <laughs> And all that you do for the town, it's very impressive. And um, I just want to commend everyone that works so hard for our town. So I am gonna I am gonna say bye. Um, and thank you for letting me put my idea forth. No, absolutely. Great idea and, for for coming out. And um, hopefully, I'll hear something and and talk about it more. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I love the gardening idea. I think that's wonderful because I think some, I think people will come out and want to do it. People are thinking about 
home gardening more. That's for sure. Yeah. So thank you all. all right. And again, thank you for all that you do. All right. You're welcome. Uh, Good night. Dude, I have a quick question before you get started. Did You said that hearing on the town plan before the next select board meeting or did you mean like at the next select board meeting? Um, before we'll have a, a special meeting for the the um uh the hearing on the town plan before the um the select board meeting so, so the, hearing, if the select board meetings at six the hearing would be like maybe at five well, thirty. we would probably have the the hearing at six and then the select board to follow okay the, the hearing notice says it's six o'clock six o'clock yeah Thank you. I just want to make sure I had that correct in the paper. And then also to make clear that you can access the draft on the town website if people have questions about it. This is a plan that was already had a public hearing with the planning board and where the public had the um, first um, and the largest, well, not the largest, but uh, an opportunity to make comments. And some of those were incorporated into the plan. So this is this. Um, this should not be considered like a um, oh my god I, I I can't miss this but right this is my right. chance and then we're going to turn around and start rewriting the plan in a couple of years again it's a constantly moving thing but this is um, part of the process is the planning board um, um, creates the plan and presents it to the public and then incorporates the public um, comments and then presents it to the select board which then um brings it up again for the public to see and then adopts it so that's the process here um, okay that's a good idea frank to to mention that again um all right we've got um because i think that i'm running out of Oh, he, Frank had one more question. He mentioned, do, should the board meet more often? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, oh. yeah. What do you, what do you, this, it seems like a real long time just because occasionally we get these three weeks in between because of this last one. But um, I am, I have, um, I don't know, what's your, what's your thoughts, Frank? So what would you like to do? Well, I, I don't, I don't really have any thoughts about it. I just wondered if, if, the you know the situation we're in warrants more a little more contact but i don't know i i think uh it's it's kind of like uh i think maybe we will can revisit that if things get worse down the road i think and maybe yep. i and i did call uh vermont league of cities and towns and if we do need a to go into executive session, we can do that in an open meeting. We just have to sign off from this, right? Probably talk on the phone or whatever in an executive session situation and then join the meeting again. And if we do it on a special meeting, you'd have to have a warning that we're gonna have a meeting, open a meeting, close the meeting, have right. an executive right. session and then come back. So they said that was legal to do if we needed it. I, I don't suspect we do. We just have to um, then communicate any decisions that were made or actions taken at in the executive session. So we Correct. can, yeah. In Correct. fact, we have one warned for um, tonight after this meeting and I, I can monitor and it would just basically, um, you know, have everyone sign off and then the three of us can stay on and then we can, um, communicate, I guess, um, yeah, absolutely. We'd, you know, we could communicate back to, um, to, um, Julie and, and how to do that with Orca media and turning off the camera, turning on the camera. But, um, it's not, um, I think a lot of it's, it's not, um, yeah, it's, it, but back to the topic of, of meeting more often, I guess I feel like I've been meeting a lot with the task the, the task force then we've been meeting twice a week and it's um and so i'm i'm feeling um meeting out it's awkward that we can't have the select all more of the select board involved with it without it being a public warned meeting and then it, it makes it less agile for sure so we've been um 
trying to communicate. And so the letters that we've been sending out weekly have kind of served as a, to keep the public and everyone um, connected with what we're what we're talking about and the decisions that we're trying to make to to um, keep things going. But um, we, we can totally warn um, a special meeting, you know, with a 24-hour notice advance, and we can have an emergency meeting without any advance um, if something really drastic comes up. So we do we do have the ability to to meet more often. Uh, okay, that's that's fine with me. I I just I was just throwing it out there because. Yep. I'm new to this. I don't really know. And it was a long time since our last meeting because of the way the month fell. That you know, it's the second and, and fourth Monday, and then that gave us three weeks instead of two. This last one. And, um, so. and there are several select boards that are meeting weekly now, like over in Bethel. They are. They yeah. they decided to do that. But I mean, it's it's all in what I don't think they have a task force, but I'm not sure. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think Bethel does have a task force. Oh, they do. You're right. You're, you're right. They do. I'm sorry. Excuse me. So I guess we're good with it then. If you guys are happy, I'm I'm fine with it. Yep. I mean, any time that any one of us um, feel the need to to gather and call a meeting, we can we can do that. Um, just okay. have to warn it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Probably check with you. Um, Frank, if you were looking for a specific information, you could check with Rob, who's the director of emergency management and heading the task force. If you had a question, he could probably give you some information about it. Okay. I was thinking more along the, the budget items. Budget info. And, and, and that's, and they're very likely there are, we're going to have to sit down and, and talk about some of that stuff um, sooner than later. Yeah. yeah. That, that was my concern. Yeah. Revenue is there and, more of an issue for me yeah, than the, yeah. than yeah. what everybody, just, everybody I think is doing a good job. Doing we do have a line of credit that we had um, established for the Bethel Mountain Road project. It's still an open line of credit with some availability to it. So we do have a little bit of a cushion of credit to sit back on if we need. Right. Uh, Burma, did you have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to raise this uh, question. The Vermont Department of Natural Resources may have limitations on whether or not people can take water out of rivers and streams to water yeah. gardens, because I know that there was a time when people were thinking about setting up little pumps to get water for their gardens, and it wasn't allowed by the state of Vermont. So. I'm just throwing that in the mix while you have that idea roiling around. Okay, no, that's good. Okay. Yeah, I had that in my notes for me to check on that. Yep. Okay. All right, uh, is there um, anything else that anyone wants to talk about before we move into the executive session? Uh, and just, uh, Frank, I'd be happy to work with you brainstorming for voting options. Okay. You... That's fine. I, I, I'll be in touch with you. Okay. And I can I can also send you information, Frank, that I get from the state. Okay. That'd be good to know. It, I just want to make sure we have some options that yeah. we, we can adapt because this thing changes so much and it may, it may be mute, uh, a moot point at the time we have the election, but if it doesn't, if it's not, then at least we have options. Yeah. That's all I'm trying to figure out. Great. All right. So um, thank you all for joining us. At least we didn't have to drive out in the rain. Um, <laughs> so if Patty and Frank can stay on and we can have our executive session and everyone else can click out. Okay, and good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank, you good night. Thank you, everybody. Thanks Thank for all you. your hard work.